Hey guys, welcome back. Victor G here. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a front brake job on this uh, 2010 Lexus RX 450H. Uh, don't mind the damage here. Somebody did a hit and run on my car. It's going to the body shop next week. It doesn't normally look like this with a bunch of zip ties holding the bumper together. Before starting the brake pad replacement, check the brake fluid level. On the RX 350, it will be over here. On the hybrid, it's on this side. As you're compressing the caliper pistons, uh, that will force brake fluid back into the brake fluid uh, reservoir. So if your level is high, like at or above the max mark, uh, see here we're quite full. Then uh, as you're compressing the calipers, the brake fluid may overflow through the cap. So if your brake fluid is pretty high, use a syringe or a turkey baster or something along those lines to suck some of that brake fluid out. Lift the front wheels of the ground and uh, support the vehicle securely by jack stands. The lifting points are right there on the unibody pinch welds. Don't work on it if it's just supported by a jack because uh, the jack can collapse and uh, hurt you. Remove the front wheel using a 21 millimeter saw. Clean up the hub here in case there's any corrosion. Make it easier to take the rotor off. Remove the two 14 millimeter slider pin bolts. Now, uh, oftentimes the pin is gonna turn, so you're gonna wanna hold it with a 17 millimeter wrench. Uh, the wrench has to be thin enough to fit in there. Uh, some wrenches don't fit because they're too wide. This one barely fits. Now you can take the bolts out. And slide the caliper off and rest it on top here. Remove the little spreader springs and pull the pads out. Unbolt the caliper bracket bolts using a 17 millimeter socket. and uh, remove the caliper bracket. There are a couple of ways to get this rotor off. One thing you can do is beat on it with a hammer from the inside. Uh, I'm gonna be machining these, so I wanna preserve them, so I'm not gonna do that. The other thing you can do is uh, grab a M8 by 1.25 metric bolt, put a little bit of anti-seize on it just to help it go in uh, better and then screw it into one of these holes and tighten it until the, cal uh, the rotor comes off. There we go. Now you'll need to compress the caliber piston so you can put the new pads in. One way of doing it is you can stick the old pad in here and then squeeze it together with big channel locks or some sort of pliers. The other way is to use a tool like this. Well, it's a caliper piston spreader. You install it in between, and this one can do both of them at the same time. And then you just keep cranking on it until the calipers are all the way retracted or the pistons are retracted all the way into the caliper. All right, that's it. These rotors still have a lot of thickness left on them. They are well above minimum thickness, so we're gonna machine them. And uh, turn a rotor looking like this into a rotor looking like this. Clean up the hub surface really well. You don't want any rust on it or any little chunks that can fall between the hub and the rotor that will uh, 
cause it not to sit straight and uh, can cause a vibration or noise or other issues. Let's put our freshly machined rotor on. And what I always try to do is, you see these uh, marks from where the holes are for pulling the rotor off the, the hub? I always try to line up the holes on the rotor with the same holes, so that are uh, with the same marks, so that if there's any uh, rust ridge there or anything like that, it doesn't uh, make the rotor not sit straight. So get it on and then uh, use a lug nut just to uh, secure it in place temporarily so that when we are um, assembling everything the rotor doesn't move. What we want to do now is get this uh, caliper bracket cleaned up and uh, ready for installation. Uh, you can see that somebody assembled this one incorrectly actually. Uh, the spring here is pointing one way but here it's the other way and uh, same here, so whoever did these brakes last uh, did not uh, quite know what they're doing. So we're gonna have to swap it so that they're facing properly. We use a little brush and clean the inside of the sliders really well. You wanna get all the dirt and dust and junk out of there so the pads can fit in there nicely. And you can also use a small uh, screwdriver if you need to clean any stubborn rust or dirt out of the corners there. Okay, now we're gonna take them out and uh, place them so they're, they're pointing the proper way. And you can just grab the little screwdriver and get it under here. Lift it up a little bit and uh, pop this out. And then this one here is also installed incorrectly. So we'll get this one out of the way. And uh, now you have a bunch of rust build up inside here. So if you have power tools, it's uh, way more convenient. You can use a grinder with a brush on it and uh, clean all this off. I'm in my garage right now. I'm just using hand tools. You can just take a little flat blade screwdriver and scrape all this crud out of here and clean it up with a brush. So we'll do that until they're really nice and clean. And then uh, also oftentimes on the back of these sliders, you're gonna have a lot of buildup. So what's gonna happen is if you don't clean everything properly, the pads are not gonna slide in there nicely and then they're gonna get jammed up. Uh, when you press on the brakes, there is a lot of force pressing on them. So they will contact the rotor and they'll slow the car down. But when you release the brakes, they will not retract back and they'll keep uh, riding on the rotor and it's gonna cause premature brake pad wear. So let's go around and uh, clean all of these real well, clean the insides uh, for the sliders real well, and then uh, we'll see where we get. Clean this surface here as well, because that's where the pad sits on when it slides, not just inside here, but inside here as well. Some rust build up on there. Now that uh, all of these surfaces, the sides and the bottom are nice and clean, you can grab your uh, slider insert and uh, slide it in place. Press down on it until it fits nicely in there. So you don't wanna have any gap here. It's nice and flush and now repeat this with all four corners. I usually do one or two at a time. That way you don't run into the problem that the last guy did where he installed them backwards. All right, now that we're done cleaning everything, uh, let's uh, grab our brake pads and uh, see if they fit in there nicely before we continue with anything else. So grab the pad and see if it slides in there easily. If uh, if you have to use force, like a lot of force, like a hammer or a pry bar or anything, then uh, you definitely haven't done a good enough job. So you'll have to take things apart and clean them a little bit better. So here we're sliding pretty good. It's a little bit tight. So I'm gonna take it apart one more time. 
and just uh, scrape it off a little bit more. It's almost, it's almost there. Let's try this side here. Make sure the sliders are inserted all the way. Oh, this one's almost there as well. So just a little more cleaning. Oh, this one's actually quite nice. So I'll just clean the inside a little bit. Yeah, this one goes right through. All right, once we're done with that, let's uh, get the slider pins out of here and clean those as well. I'll just grab it, pull it back and uh, get the boot off of it and slide the pins out. So you want to wipe them off. Sometimes you'll see them pretty rusty. It depends how much water got in there. This one looks really nice. It's very clean. Um, if it's rusty, you can use a little screwdriver and clean this uh, edge inside where the lip of the boot sits and then that's gonna help uh, prevent the water from getting in there because if it's all full of rust uh, it's pushing the lip away and then war water salt dirt can get inside and uh, you can use um, like a wire wheel to clean this off this one's really good so we don't really need to do anything and then use some of this uh, toyota rubber grease this is what uh, Lexus and Toyota specify for these slider pins. Take a small amount like this and get it all over the pin. Get some on this lip right here too where the boot is going to sit and then get it in there and make sure that the boot is on all the way. And then what I do is I'll take a little screwdriver and I just lift this edge up a little bit just to relieve some of the air pressure that could be built in there. Because sometimes there'll be um, air trapped inside and it will force this boot to keep coming out. Like it'll keep pressing on it, which is not what we want. So let's get this uh, pin out and take a look at this one as well. Okay, so this guy looks quite good as well. Doesn't have any rust on it. Notice how one has a little rubber um, seal or o-ring on it and the other one doesn't. So don't mix them up that's why i always take them out just one by one that way you know which way it goes back together and you don't run into any issues down the road okay so this guy is good some rubber grease on this guy on the seal as well sometimes the one with the rubber uh, O-ring doesn't want to go in as nicely. I'll just make sure you okay. Let's make sure that this pin moves still. Yeah, that uh, rubber seal creates a little more uh, tension on it inside. Okay, and get the air out of there don't tear the boot with your screwdriver so be careful when you're doing that all right we can turn it it turns it slides now let's take some of this uh, brake protection paste so it's like a type of an anti-seize and uh, get it into the sliders spread it around and that's going to help the pad slide in there and not get stuck if there's any excess, just remove it so that uh, it doesn't end up on your rotors. Spread it around nicely. Get a little more. Okay, and now we can uh, get the pads ready for reinstallation. So grab your pads. They're uh, symmetrical on this model, inside, outside. They're the same. You set them up the way they would be on a vehicle so this will be the inside pad this will be the outside pad and then uh, get your little uh, squealers on there so these are the brake squealers or wear indicators and they're gonna clip on here make sure you don't install it upside down or backwards I see people sometimes stick them on something silly like this and yeah that's definitely not correct and then there's a little um, little tab on it right here and that tab fits into this cutout on the pad so when you're installing them make sure it goes on all the way until it clicks 
like that. And if sometimes it doesn't, just grab a little screwdriver in there and uh, you can push it until it engages with a cutout and that will make sure it doesn't fall off. So now we can take this uh, Toyota brake caliper grease and then this is what I put on the back of the pads. You don't need a whole lot. And what it's going to do is it will help these uh, shims not slide around and it will also absorb some of the vibration from braking. So it's going to prevent uh, squealing noises. So put four little dabs on there, grab your new shims. It's always a good idea to replace them when you're doing a brake job. And then uh, personally, I only use Lexus and Toyota parts when I service my brakes on my vehicles. I find uh, with aftermarket products, you get so many issues like noise, vibration, excessive pad and rotor wear. Okay, so now these guys are ready to go in. And do just a quick final check just to make sure our pads fit in there and slide nicely. Yeah, don't really have to use a lot of effort to get them through. Check the other side line it up straight and make sure it goes through easily that's good let's go ahead and reinstall the caliper bracket i like to put just a little bit of anti-seize on these bolts so they don't get stuck in there for next time tighten them to 77 foot pounds or uh, nice and snug That's one, that's two, install the pads. I'll slide nice and easy, don't have to bash them in there. Beautiful. Now grab the little spreader springs that come with a new brake pit, pad kit and then install them in the little holes in the pads. Hold the pads together with one hand, otherwise they're going to come apart because uh, these springs are pushing them apart. Make sure they're inserted fully and now you can grab your caliper with the other hand and uh, slide it over. Make sure that you don't roll this uh, boot. You know what, actually on this one, you see how the boot is sticking out a bit? So we want to we wanna make sure that's all the way down before we put it on. Otherwise, it can get rolled behind the pad and the pad's going to squeeze it and uh, rip a hole in it. So let's do that first. So we'll take our little flat blade screwdriver and what we want to do is uh, just get it between the piston and the boot. Uh, be careful and gentle with it so you don't rip a hole in it and just... Uh, Pull, uh, pull the boot away just a little bit. What happens is there's air in behind there and it's causing pressure that's pushing this boot out. See how I press on it and then uh, it pops back up again. So there we go. So let's get all this air out from behind there. And now it's sitting nice and flush. It's not uh, past the piston so that when the pad slides in here, it's not going to pinch that boot and cause, uh, cause a tear in it. All right, let's get the caliper back on. And get the slider pin bolts in. Remember, if the pins start turning while you're trying to tighten these bolts, you can hold them with a narrow, thin 17 millimeter wrench. Sometimes the wrench won't fit, so you either have to buy a skinnier one or you can take a junk one that you have laying around and grind it down until it's narrow enough to fit in there. Now tighten these guys to 25 foot-pounds or moderately tight. Oh, this pin is not spinning, so we're good there. And uh, neither is this one, so we don't have to hold it. And as a final step, I'll... Uh, just make sure there's no air pressure built up under those uh, boots. So pull it back a little bit gently. There we go. Now you can get off the lug nut that was holding the rotor on and uh, reinstall the wheel.
Now repeat this whole process on the other side of the vehicle. And uh, tighten both front wheels to uh, 76 foot-pounds. Uh, once you tighten the wheels and before you start the vehicle, pump the brake pedal several times until it's, it's hard. That's gonna take up uh, any slack in the caliper pistons because we compress them all the way back. This is especially important on the hybrid vehicles. Sometimes if you don't do this before you start the vehicle, uh, I will set some uh, brake fault codes, which you'll have to clear afterwards. So give it a few good pumps and then uh, go ahead and check the brake fluid level. So with the brand new brakes all around, your fluid level should be uh, right around max level. Uh, if it's low, use DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid to top it up. If it's really high, then use a syringe or a turkey baster to remove some of the fluid. And uh, then uh, you're good to go ahead and uh, take the vehicle for a test drive. And that's it. The brake job is completed. Thanks for watching. Please check for product links below the video for any tools or supplies needed to complete the procedure shown in this tutorial. If you would like me to make a specific video, Please leave a suggestion in comments and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.